Hmm. Now that is interesting. Both of these knives look almost identical, don't you think? In style. And this isn't the first time we've seen them on the TMP camera. SHOT Show coverage, Kershaw Booth Review with Gen 2011, we talked about them then. On the top is the Chinese produced Compound 1940. On the bottom is the Turbulent 790, that's a US produced knife. And since they're so similar in design, function, and honestly, cutting performance, it gives us a unique opportunity in this video to have a case study in what this means. Made in the USA. And the economic and quality realities that a manufacturer will make, in this case, Kershaw. I guess I'll start off with a question too. Which knife are you going to buy? I might ask you again before the video ends and through going through all this stuff, I might provide some of my own insight to that question. Let's kick it. Philosophy of use. And let me start off by saying this actually is I really would like to start out here. Value. Because I think that is where, where the real interest is going to lie for me. I'll tell you right now, that's where it lies for me. That's an interesting discussion. Value between these two knives. Nearly identical. One's Chinese produced. One's US produced. There's lots of talk in the TMP comments about guys like, well, I, only, I will only buy US produced knives. These days, to be absolutely honest, kind of jumping ahead to that value talk, I do lean towards US produced knives if I get value in return performance in return, cool factor in return, but not always and I am definitely not prejudiced against Chinese or any other overseas produced knife. I'm not going to close myself off to that. There's just too many great blades to talk about. If I shut myself off to that as a reviewer, then I shut myself off to a lot of awesome knives that can equip my audience. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to it on to philosophy of use and I'm going to go quick on this. I'm going to stay, stay straight out the gate these are EDC knives, not tactical knives. And I think somewhere in the Kershaw catalog, this is an 11 catalog. Check that out, acquisition box right there. That means I wanted to get it, test it, review it for you guys. I guess I should check that. I've lost interest in that one, by the way. A random task too. I just have looked at it several times to buy it for you guys. And I'm just, wow, the price is up there. Maybe later, might loan it. That happens all the time. Uh, here's the 12 catalog, and getting back to POU, Allie's ripping someone's head off again. Good girl. Mostly sold as a tactical blade. I'm not going to find it in here. Uh, you got to have a good traction plan for that, guys. I've I've been saying that within at least the last year, probably long before that, to have you know an ability not to cut yourself in that that role, that very serious emergency defense roll. And by the way, still got my shop cut on there. Sorry. Drill bit, finger. I'm sorry, it's distracting. Press it on. Uh, I wouldn't say tactical blades. Not for me. They just lack real traction. I'll jump ahead. There's no jimping. I've cured this before in some other Kershaw knives. I think it was, what, the compound? that? Uh, no, the trimmer. I put skateboard tape on top of that to give it traction and it works great. I love the trimmer by the way. It's such a big old knife. Serious defensive tool for very little money. Here though, we may lack some of that. We do have a finger guard produced by the flipper and actually it's kind of a choil, so maybe some traction. So I will say medium capabilities in the defensive role and leave it at that. I think mostly though, for both of the knives, I'm talking the turbulence and the compound, we're looking at EDC knives. About the same blade length. On the bottom, the turbulence is three and a quarter inch blade and a little bit longer at three and a half inch blade for the compound on top. For a lot of guys, most guys, some gals, that's perfect. Collectability? Uh, no. I don't think so. And I think Kershaw has kind of created a problem for themselves. You guys know I'm brutally honest. Here comes some more honesty. Kershaw, I know, watch this video, and they may be on top of this already. Um, they've just created a sea of knives that look the same. As a knife reviewer, I get confused. The names, the looks, they're all, I don't know, 
bead blasted, blasted, satin finished, black G10. They're great blades, but in the process, maybe we lose a little bit of personality and to some folks, attractiveness. Now, if we go to their, you know, their classic line, there's some personality there. Leaks, scallions. Yeah, they have some personality. I think they're getting this because looking in their 12 catalog, and we're still talking about collectability. Here we see a stainless steel volt coming out. That's different. The zing without its striations on the blade. That cryo is a very cool blade. It looks different. I love the looks of that one. You see where I'm going with that? So collectability, and I'm def definitely not talking about it increasing in value. I don't think these knives will ever do that. I could be wrong. A lot of production knives have. I'm talking about that it gives you enjoyment in your personal collection. Uh, yeah, perhaps it could. Um, but I think mostly their role is utility knives. We'll leave it at that. Size and weight. I'm a little bit lukewarm just because of the weight. I know. 4.2 ounces. I know that's not a a huge amount of weight but I have such lightweight carry options avail to, available to me in the role of EDC then we go back to POU you see where I'm going if it was a true tactical blade then 4.2 ounces for me is it's light here's a Volt 2 I mean that's a much lighter blade well maybe not much lighter 3.4 ounces 8 CR 13 MOV steel okay that's more of a knife that I would EDC I know because I kind of had to force myself to EDC this one. I was like, I need to really carry that 1790. I wasn't excited to do it. Not lying to you guys, just being straight up with you. I did it a couple weeks and it works. Uh, the weight then is totally in the ballpark for EDC. I have lots of other lighter options. Again, remember, I'm talking EDC, not tactical here. How about the blade shapes? Like I introed with, they're pretty much the same. Modified drop points, I guess. Recurve. This is a serrated model. I have a plain edge model floating around here. I couldn't find it. I love the blade shapes, to be honest with you. In an EDC roll, good belly. They got a nice, precise tip on it. Looking at the 1790. And I think this one is actually flat ground from the upper portion. That's hollow ground, the compound 1940. It's a good looking blade. It's a functional blade. And Kershaw has several designs that kind of mimic this. Uh, excellent. I don't dig these serrations, by the way. I generally like Kershaw serrations in this particular model. I hate them. That's because they have those peaks right there that I think with some really hard cutting might rip. For me, this is just kind of a different serration pattern. So partially serrated, I, sh I guess I should say. But the blade is pretty much the same. Hollow ground in this portion again. The steels are different. And now we're getting into that, what I think is an interesting discussion on U.S. produced versus Chinese produced. This is 8CR13 MOV steel, analogous to OS8. I've come to love that steel. It takes and holds a very fine edge. The only criticism I can level against it that is meaningful is that it will rust on you especially if it's bead blasted or satin finished like this. It's even more so that way. Stone washing would be better. Coating would be better. It's a great steel though. It comes very sharp out of the box, the compound does. Now this is an upgraded steel. 14C28N. I've talked about it lots. It is a replacement for the Sandvik 13C26 which had rust problems. This is insanely sharp out of box. Great relief edge on it. Easy to sharpen, few complaints on edge holding. I personally have not seen them at all. I find 14C28N in my cutting test does just about like any other steel. It goes dull enough, you know, in my cardboard ted testing, but it can take a fine edge. I really, really love that. It's a fine grained steel and it's proprietary to Kershaw, Chinese versus US. Now, these are different quality levels of steel, right? Well, maybe. I mean, I say maybe because in terms of practical cutting performance of what you're going to do with this knife in EDC, maybe not. You might not see a huge difference. I mean, this is honestly made out of 8CR13 MOV, and for that matter, the, the handle scales, which I'll talk about, because it's made in China. The 8CR is a Chinese-produced steel. 
uh, it's easy for them to get it. It's high quality, like we say, like we say, OS 8. They're not going to import another steel and throw it into China because then Kershaw loses its cost advantage. The knife ends up being, I don't know, seven eighths the price of this one. What have we gained in the process? So that's an interesting economic choice that we're making. So they're basically making the same knife overseas at a price point. They're using good to excellent materials and this is kind of Kershaw's no compromise interpretation of the same formula. That's interesting to me. That's how I look at it by the way. How about speed? I'll say it is good, it is not amazing in both of the knives. See what I'm saying? Not a complaint, just an observation. Adequate. Maybe it's because I've been working with some really fast knives lately that coming back to these that's actually a little bit faster. The 1940 is. You can even hear it. Both assisted opening with the speed safe mechanism that Kershaw does. I love that. I love the assisted opening. Just like in the trimmer. That's an assisted opening knife. What a wicked blade that is. Um, I would say it's good. Maybe excellent depending on your perception. Notice there's some thumb studs right here on the turbulence and that's providing the blade stop for you. Okay, those thumb studs when we talk about speed are really not a player in this. Who, who designed this? Was it Tim Galan? I think that's who designed the turbulence. In this flipper design. I would flip it. There's way too many occlusions going on there for you to reach those very tiny and inset thumb studs. I think most would agree. And on this blade right here, stop pin. Dedicated flipper design. Phosphor bronze bushings in both of them even in the Chinese produced one. Okay, so speed, I would go flipper on both ones. Lock up and strength. On all of these Kershaws, it's just excellent. No movement up and down. I didn't do any hard cutting with the compound. So sorry. What this one? Excellent as well. Perfection for lock up and strength, and I think they'll stay that way as long as you're within the realm of realistic EDC. And let's take a look at the liner locks. The engagement surface is right there. That's a hardened stainless steel liner there. That's the turbulence, the compound. About the same. Let's check out blade centering while we're here. Man, I'm glad when I remember that. To me, that's kind of just a, a quality check of how the knife is put together, the attention to detail. Actually, the turbulence there on the bottom kind of just very, very slightly skews to the left. You might be able to see that on the camera. It looks like pretty much perfection on the compound, from as far as I can tell. Handle retention. These are assisted opening, so they're going to have more retention. Outstanding. Here we go with another difference. U.S. produced on the top, Chinese on the bottom. Handle variations. I would really like to see different colors from Kershaw. And after watching this video, maybe, I don't know, they'll get some for us. I mean, Spyderco gets it. Sprint Run Tenacious in Blue. Now that's an interesting knife to me personally. It's limited, it's cool, and it's blue. I love blue. Love it. Heck, I get it for my special edition blades. Desert Dragon prototype in the Nut and Fancy project. This is indeed the prototype. Had a very limited run of those. Makes a knife special, collectible, cool. We just, you know, left the crowds of black and silver and now the knife achieves something special. We'll start off with a compound. This is low traction G10 and I've gotten to the point where I, I just don't like it. I know it's a very affordable knife. That's what's available there without importing it in China. It sucks. There's really no traction at all on it. The good side is there's no harsh corners on the compound. It's affixed with normal torque screws while we're looking at the handle. There's your pivot point. This, by the way, has a Zytel backspacer in the back. And you look inside, you don't see any milling of the liners. Which honestly is kind of interesting to me because both of these knives are exactly the same at 4.2 ounces. The turbulence does. It has aggressive milling of the liners for this US produced knife, higher quality levels. See that? They've milled out all the metal they can, and yet the knife weighs about the same thing. 
the handle scales are superior. I will call it medium traction G10. We've seen it lots and lots, no sharp corners. There's your lanyard hole in the turbulence, lanyard hole in the compound. Other than traction, the ergonomics of the handle are pretty much the same between the two knives. I do have a slight preference for the 1940. I think it looks better, it's more organic and sweeping, and it's slightly, ever so slightly longer. So for me, it just has a little bit more real estate to work with. A very shallow finger choil in both of them, and once again, that flipper acts as a guard. So that is, an, I guess, an ergonomic plus. Even an EDC just gives you a little bit more control. Ergonomically then, overall, good. I wouldn't say excellent. We lack thumb ramps. We lack jimping. And in this model, we lack traction. Overall good traction. But remember, keep in mind the price point. This is a price point knife. It's to be expected. On to clip design. We've seen it lots. This one here, and I think they call it their Type G clip. I'm not a super fan of, I don't know, how it looks. I think I said that when I reviewed the Oso Suite. It's got the same clip. I liked how that one was polished. It makes sense thematically for that knife. Uh, the good news is, first, in the turbulence, is that it is three-way positionable in this U.S. production knife. You can go tip up, tip down. If you're a lefty, rejoice, you can actually put it on that side. Kind of out of luck with this one. Now, it's swappable on one side for tip up, tip down. I just have it in the factory position, uh, tip down. But you can't swap it over to that side. Remember, price point. You can't get everything. As far as functionality, the clip is just fine. It's strong. It's attached by two screws. Slight Wizard of Oz issues. By that, I mean it just looks a little bit funky. There's other clips I like. Uh, a favorite is their Type I, and that would be on this knife right here. No, 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 no. Kershaw Blur. That is a cool clip. I don't know if it would I don't know, totally fit on this knife because this is a straight handle design. This isn't. I get it. Durability. Okay, Chinese knife on the top, U.S. knife on the bottom. Which one do you think is going to be more durable in hard EDC use? Oh, definitely the U.S. knife. Uh, I'll differ with you on that. I don't think so. They're both representing excellent quality levels. The only differences really between these two knives are steel and the G10. That's about it. I mean, yeah, one lacks thumb studs other slight differences, but functionally they're going to last you a long time. A very long time. You might have a preference for 14C28N. Push comes to shove, I will admit that I would prefer that steel. There you go. I like it. It's just, I, it, I like that steel. Um, but I also like, if not love, 8CR13 MOV at a price point. You always got to keep that in mind when we're talking about it. Okay, and now we come to the very interesting discussion. So durable, yes. Very interesting discussion of value. I'm going to start off with some competitive options. I already showed you these. How about the Spyderco Tenacious? And we could have the same made in the U.S. versus Chinese discussion with Spyderco, couldn't we? Spyderco Endura versus the Spyderco Tenacious, or even the Birdline, the Caracara. The, but those knives are not super identical. Uh, the Caracara and the Endura, yeah, kind of. Metal Arc, Delica, yeah, they're, they're similar, but not identical. These, to me, are even closer in design. So Spyderco does that, too. They do U.S. production. They do overseas production. And we love the Tenaciouses, don't we? I do. Love them. Use them. It's a great overall EDC and tactical blade. It's got jumping and a thumb ramp. They get it. So a couple competitive options. I showed you the Oso Sweet. That one's excellent, although it's really in a different category for weight. It's lighter, which I prefer. How about this one? It's now called the Salvo when it first came out. The Barrage. Also in 14C28N. I showed you in that review of the Alabama Damascus model. Interestingly, this is the same weight. Let me double check make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, 4.2 ounces. Same as these knives. So let's compare the size. Now this is a stainless steel frame knife, so that adds a lot of weight. We're talking EDC here. Which one would you rather carry between these two? Hmm, I don't know. Depends. A lot of guys like the hand filling design. 
In other words, when it's deployed, it feels better. And some, uh, and I tend to fall into this category, love it how it carries, that it's slim and it just doesn't bump into stuff. I really love slim knives. That's a, just a quick look at, I don't know, that option, the Salvo. How about this one? Remember the Scamp? That's an excellent knife. That's a four ounce, about $28 knife. And I guess I should say the prices on these knives. $17.90 is not cheap. Now we get into, again, the US made discussion. It's gonna be around 70 bucks. And the compound is gonna be much less at around 20, $25. Price may vary for 8CR 13 MOV. Okay, and the Scamp before it goes out of frame forever. Four ounces, around $28 again. Love that blade shape. I actually love that stainless steel frame lock. It's lighter than these knives. So I'm gonna ask you again right now, which one are you gonna buy? Pretty much the same practical performance levels between the two knives. Hmm, that's a tough question. How about you, Nut Fancy? Which one would you buy? Well, I'm gonna again go back to collectability, coolness factor. I don't think for me at this stage of my knife career, these represent any cool factor for me. They're just not special enough. They're standard black G10, standard blades. Now granted, I do like this black Tainai better. I think in that coloration, the 1790 holds a lot of attractiveness for me. I do like the fact that it's made in the US. I like 14C28 in. I like the G10 scales. So if push comes to shove, I would choose this knife. Now if price is critical and I don't have a lot of bucks, the compound again is basically the same knife. I get excited about the compound when I see the price. When I pay the price, but it's made in China, isn't that fancy? I know. I've established that. But it's an awesome knife as far as its performance levels are concerned in the EDC role. There you go. Which one are you going to buy? Which one did you buy? I think this video is going to generate some interesting comments. Be cool with each other, please. Respectful, as always, as we do here in the Nut and Fancy Project. You might have some discussions, China versus U.S. Every company's doing it. Well, not every company, but lots of knives, knife companies are doing it. They're trying to give you the performance of this knife more affordably. And that's what you get. There are a few compromises made. To me, I don't think 8CR 13 MOV is a meaningful compromise. The handle to me is, has no traction on it. If you were to jimp this knife, give it more traction, I could put in a tactical, tactical philosophy of use, but not as it stands now. There you go. That's the two for one nothing fancy knife review. Pick your best blade. Have fun with it. See ya.